Hello friends and fashion lovers, welcome and welcome back. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you for clicking on this video. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how I made this fairy ball dress. This ball dress is made without can-can. Yes, what I mean by can-can is the heart knits. Most people know it as heart knits. If you want to know how to make it, please just keep watching. The material and the amount I used for this tutorial is displayed on the screen. You can increase yours or reduce yours depending on the age of the child and the fullness you are trying to achieve. To start with the pattern drafting of the bodice, so here I have my pattern paper unfold. In the description box, there will be a link to standard measurements of children aged 0 to 12. Please, if you're confused, check that out. So here, I am going to start by marking a shoulder line, which is also serve, serving as my guide line. From that guideline, I am putting my bodice length. Yes, I am going to be including seaming allowance in my pattern, so you can do well to include yours. Next is have the shoulder width measurement and the neck width of your choice. Then I'm going ahead to mark the shoulder slope. From the shoulder slope, I am marking the ham hole depth. So from the ham hole depth, I am going to put quarter of the round chest measurement plus ease. Then on the end of the bodice, I am going to put quarter of the waist measurement, but I'm just using the same measurement I have on the chest on the waistline. So do well to put quarter of the round waist measurement plus ease. So at this point, what I'm doing is just connecting the ham hole. Please note that this bodice is a sleeveless one. Next is to put in the neck width measurement. So I'm using the same neck width for the back and the front. So do well to use whatever neck width you are okay with so now i am just adding my seaming allowance i love my front bodice to be longer than my back bodice right now the pattern is ready i am just going to be indicating how many times i'm cutting each piece and also i will be adding a zipper allowance to the back of my pattern So I'm placing my pattern on my fabric to cut and I'm repeating the same step for my lining as well. Please, the front is cut on fold. Don't forget to add zipper allowance to the back of your pattern because you want the child to be able to get in and out of the dress. So I'm just notching where I'll fix the zip. To my skirt piece now, I'm just folding my fabric in half the skirt is going to be a half circle to have the half circle radius you do well to divide the round waist measurement plus ease and the zipper allowance you have at the back by 3.14 so whatever waist measurement you had used plus ease do well to divide it by 3.14 the next thing is to mark your desired skirt length yes you don't have to take away anything just mark your desired skirt length because you will be one inch short because you'll be attaching the skirts by half inch to your bodice and also half inch you'll probably use it to roll hem the skirt if you have marked this just cut your skirt out so you can reconfirm the waist measurement here i've cut my skirt out since it's an half circle it has opening 
So what I'm going to do is now place my skirt right side facing. You want to match up this side and stitch. But before you stitch close the skirt, just mark 3 inches downward. My zipper allowance is 1 inch. So I'm going to start at that 1 inch mark and stitch close my skirt. And also I'm going to hem the bottom of my skirt. So you do well to just hem the bottom of your skirt. I'm going to roll hem the bottom of the skirt. So to my tool now, I use 9 yards of tool for this project. So what I did was divide my tool into three parts. What I mean by dividing my tool into three parts is I divided it into three parts of three yards. That means three times in three places, that's nine. You could use more tool, you could use less. Then I'm marking my desired skirt length plus extra two inches because you are going to be gathering the tool and you could need some adjustment by trimming it, especially if you're not using a rotary cutter. So the next thing is I'm just going to cut the remaining parts. If I cut one part, I'm going to cut the remaining part in layers. Shortly, I'm going to do a paper illustration for you to really grasp what I mean. So this is how the layering looks. So here comes the paper illustration. Assuming this is my whole nine yards of two. So what I'm going to do is just divide it into three parts you could make it three equal parts or four parts depending on how many yards of tools you use so i decided to go with three parts so here with my three parts divided out i decide to fold it since i'm not using a rotary cutter so i find out that folding it this way helps me to cut it as close to even as possible so that's my tool in three parts so what I do to the first part is I just mark my desired skirt length plus extra two inches since I'll be gathering it and I'll need some adjustment since I'm not hemming this too. So to the left over, so I decide to layer it by marking 20 inches then the other one since it's a full length gown, whatever is left, I just decide to use it that way. So it's not a strict way. So I'm just repeating the same thing for the second part of my two. So I've cut those two parts into three parts. But for my last part, which is my third part, I choose to go with my skirt length, twice my skirt length. My skirt length is 26 inches, so I cut twice of that. So at the end of the day, I have four layers of my desired skirt length that's the tool I have is four layers that's a long one while I have two short layers and those layers are going to be under the long one I will get back to it much later but I just wanted you to have an idea of how I cut my tool. I'm going to go ahead and gather my tool and I will see you when it's all gathered. Back to my bodice now. You can see that I have used my pattern and I've cut out my bodice and I have zipper allowance on my back piece. So right here I have two pieces for my back. I am using the same fabric as lining, but in case you're using a different fabric, I guess you would do well to cut your lining. So the front is cut on fold. One important thing is, if you're not using a less fabric for your bodice, do well to cut two for your bodice. It just makes it look richer than just using a plain satin or whatever fabric you're using. Just add tool to it. If you're not using a patterned fabric, add tool to a plain fabric that you're using for your bodice in ball dress. It just helps it look more richer. So here I do well to put my tool on my fashion fabric. You want to tack that down. Assuming this is tacked down to already, I am going to go ahead and place my lining on my fashion fabric. 
you make sure the right side are facing each other so you are going to start leaving your zipper allowance out of the way stitch the neckline of the back and the arm hole and repeat the same for the front please do not stitch the shoulder after stitching your arm hole and the neckline just go in with your scissors and notch please while notching be careful not to cut the seam don't cut the stitch that you made so you are going to notch both the neckline and the arm hole so after notching you do well to turn the front part right side out yes here my shoulder seam was a bit narrow so you want to make sure that you have that seam turned out nicely and the sides are evenly distributed so just for extra added step you want to make sure that everything is sitting properly in its place go ahead and press that seam you just want to press it exactly how you want it to look on the finished product so I'm just giving only the front a good press so now on the back the back is still in the stitch position I haven't turned it right side out so you have to make sure that you have the two side of the front facing the two side of the back you're going to sandwich the front of your bodice into your back bodies you can do this to the back instead if you are a little bit uncertain about sandwiching the front into the back you can sandwich the back into the front please remember that my back piece was not turned right side out i only turned the front right side out i'm going to stitch that shoulder after stitching the shoulder joining my back and the front at the shoulder i'm just cutting back on the seam allowance you want that absolutely flat when you turn right side out like now so now my bodice is turned right side out so if you're not having a back tie or any other design to your bodice just go ahead place it right side first and lining to lining main fabric to main fabric and stitch the side but for me i was going for a back tie and a little bit of band in front so that is my band and this is my back tie so i'm going to go ahead and stitch those in place so here i've stitched my front band on my bodice and this is my back tie so what i'm doing is i'm going to place it so when you're placing your back tie Please leave about half inch seaming allowance at the down part because you'll be attaching your bodice to your skirt. Yes, just leave about half inch. You don't want to be stitching your bodice to your skirt much later and find out that your back tie was caught in between the stitch or it doesn't sit properly. So always leave about half inch at the down part of your bodice before placing your ties. So here, yeah, all I do is just pin my ties in place. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do well to subscribe. If drafting and sewing your own pattern sounds like your thing, please do well to subscribe. So right here, after pinning my back ties on, I am turning my back bodice on my front and I'm placing it right side facing lining to lining and main fabric to main fabric and I'm going to join my bodice by the side so do well to stitch the side using your seaming allowance so here is my skirt I have stitched the side using a French seam and I've also hemmed the bottom of my skirt and to my tool I have gathered each tool I cut out and this is the smallest layer is measured 14 inches 
So you can make yours smaller than this. You can layer yours, you know, more. You can have more layers. I choose to only have three layers. So on my skirt, I am going to mark 12 inches. Don't forget my tool is 14 inches. That's the smallest layer of my tool is 14 inches. And on my skirt, I am going to mark 12 inches from the bottom of the skirt upward. Just mark 12 inches upward. Please pardon me. I'm using a fabric marker because I didn't want to clean. I didn't know it's not going to be very obvious. I'll try and show you with a chalk letter. So on that 12 inch I have marked, I'm going to just place my tool there and stitch. So this is how it looks after stitching on the 12 inch mark. My tool is 14 inch so I have extra to you know adjust the length and play around. So this other tool is measured 20 inches. Yes, the second layer is measured 20 inches. Yes. So on my skirt now, still starting from the hem of my skirt upwards, I am going to measure 18 inches. So I'm just measuring this 18 inches from the hem of my skirt upward. 18 inches it's important that you measure it accurately anyway you can still adjust but it helps your work so I'm going to just stitch that layer of two at that point at that 18 inches so after stitching this is how it looks I have a layer down here I also have a layer up here so now it's time for the final layer don't forget, I said that I have four pieces when it comes to this other layer. So I've gathered two pieces here and I've also gathered another two pieces here. So I'm just going to match it together and that will form my final layer. Well, the other layers, I only have two pieces. The final layer should be more so that it can cover the layers you have under. Just know that the more layers you have and the more tool you use, the fuller and more fluffy it's going to look. If you have seen a ball dress that looks as if a thousand years of tool has been used, but yes, the person tells you that it's less tool than you think, this is how it's been achieved. But if you want a more fuller, you don't forget you can still use your can can and your lining and all that. But I just wanted to show you that. A bold dress can be made on a budget like this one. So next will be after stitching, you know, that layer on my skirt, I am going to attach my bodice and also a zipper. I personally feel I should share this step. I don't know who it's going to help. If you are using hot glue gun to attach flowers to your bold dress, please do this on a single layer that means separate the layer you are applying whatever decoration you are applying to do not use hot glue gun on the whole ball dress because it could get messy so make sure that you have a hard surface to work on because it will stick to the surface so like now I have the surface to work on. I can easily lift it up. You don't want to do this on your whole dress because you don't want to mess the two up. So that being said, this is the final look of the dress. This is the inside of the dress. Yes, it has no lining. You can see the zipper has been attached on the right side. It's been decorated with flowers. This is just to show you that you don't need to break a bank to make a nice dress for your fairy princess. Thank you for watching to this point. If this tutorial was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And see you in the next tutorial. Love you. Bye for now.